We have gathered to praise our gracious God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And as we gather together, we know that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And our grace to you and peace from God Almighty and Jesus Christ our Lord through the powerful work of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. For the white sky and the blessed sun, for the salt sea and the running water, for the everlasting hills and the never-resting winds, for trees and the common grass underfoot, we thank you for our senses by which we hear the songs of birds and see the splendor of the summer fields and taste of the autumn fruits and rejoice in the feel of snow and smell the breath of the spring. Grant us a heart wide open to all this beauty, and save our souls from being so blind that we pass unseeing when even the common thorn bush is aflame with your glory, O God, our Creator, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
reading from Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God, of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water it, its furrows abundantly, settling its riches, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills get, girt themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Hear these good words from the Gospel of John, chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And these words of thanks from 1 Chronicles chapter 16. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Thereby put me to the test, says the Lord, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. Let us give thanks to God in an offering, for God has already blessed us. Let us pray. O God of love, we give thanks for all you have given us to enjoy, our health and vigor, the love and care of home, mothers and fathers, the joys of friendship, and for every good gift of happiness and strength. We praise you for all your servants who, by example and encouragement, have helped us on our way. We thank you for every vision and idea of yourself which you have given us in sacrament or prayer. We pray we may use all these gifts in your service and to, glory, to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thanksgiving. I hope your holiday is filled with joy, rest, 
smiling faces, and good food. It's time for a word for the children. How often do we forget to say thank you? Just two little words that say so much. Imagine how we would feel if we gave someone a present only to have them grab it, rip the wrapping off without as much as a thank you. That's how God must feel when we don't say thank you to him. Sometimes we forget to be thankful when we feel sad, disappointed, or frustrated. When life is hard and things don't turn out the way we planned, we focus on all the things that are wrong or missing instead of noticing what is still good. What are some of God's gifts that you enjoy? Sunshine, good health, a loving family, friends, tasty food, a smile, the song of birds, the list could go on and on. Jesus tells a story in the Bible of 10 people with a bad skin disease called leprosy. They came to him to be healed. Jesus healed them and made them clean. Of the 10 who were healed, only one thought to give thanks. The Bible said that person was praising God with a loud voice, and he lay down before Jesus and said, thank you. Here are a few ways we can say thank you to God each day. Each morning, thank God for a new day. Thank God for the little things so easily taken for granted during an ordinary day. Thank God for answered prayers and give thanks for the good plans God makes for our life. Every little thing you have in your life is a blessing from God and something to be grateful for. If you take some time to count your blessings, you'll be surprised at how many reasons there are to be thankful. God loves it when we have thankful hearts. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray we'll always have a thankful attitude and see your blessings every day with a heart of gratitude. May we fully live into the spirit of this holiday and draw closer to God in the process. Amen. Now hear the word of God. Our first reading is from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself for getting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions, he made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth 
so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Then a reading from the epistle, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of, his, of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And then now reading from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is easy to thank God when life is good, when harvests are safely gathered in, when there is enough food on the table, loved ones are healthy, and when there is hope for the future. It is easy to sing God's praises when there is peace at home and abroad, when families gather with joyous hearts and when friends come together around conversation, laughter, and a glass of full-bodied wine, when one gathers with loved ones around a table that creaks under the weight of a Thanksgiving banquet, it is easy to sing now thank we all our God who wondrous things hath done. It is much harder to sing praise and thanks to God with joyful hearts when there are empty chairs at the Thanksgiving table, when long-held traditions are interrupted by a pandemic that is causing havoc, 
and parents and grandparents cannot embrace their children and grandchildren. The year 2020 has been a difficult and challenging year with images of emergency rooms filled with deadly sick patients, refrigerator trucks in New York City and elsewhere, more than a quarter million Americans dead and more to come, riots, divisions, and economic uncertainty for tens of millions. In a world like this, today it's not easy or for some perhaps impossible to sing about God's blessed peace to cheer us. It would be much easier to challenge God like Job did when he cursed the day he was born, when he said, let the day perish in which I was born. Let that day be darkness. Let gloom and darkness claim it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Certainly, in a world like ours, it would be easier to feel sorry for ourselves, angry at others, frustrated at, at the world, and deep down question whether God really cares about us and God's creation. One may think that Martin Rinkert, who in 1636 wrote the beautiful hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, must have been in a much better situation to be able to write such inspiring words. Let me give you some background about Martin Rinkert. He was a Lutheran minister who started his ministry in Eilenburg, Saxony, in Germany at the beginning of the Thirty Year War. The walled city of Eilenburg became the refuge for political and military fugitives. But the result was overcrowding and deadly pestilence and famine. Armies overran the city three times, and the Rinkert home was a refuge for the victims, even though he was often hard-pressed to provide for his own family. And during the height of a severe plague in 1637, Rinkert was the only surviving pastor in Eilenburg, conducting as many as 50 funerals in a day. He performed more than 4,000 funerals in that year, including that of his wife. And yet during a time of pestilence, war, economic hardships, and personal tragedy, this man wrote, Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom this world rejoices. What was his secret? How, in such a miserable situation, was it possible for him to find joy, wonder, and awe in a God who was the overflowing source of everything good? And if he could find joy, joy in spite of his circumstances back then, is it possible for us to find joy in the midst of what is going on right now. First of all, he knew, and we know, that the joy God provides is not dependent on external circumstances. Jesus promises in John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Jesus also says in John 15 verse 11, I have said these things to you so that you may have joy and that your joy may be complete. And the Apostle Paul is equally clear in 1 Thessalonians when he says rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Joy in the Lord is a joy that is rooted in God's love of humankind revealed in the birth and the death and the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. It is the joy that is not dependent on external factors, but is a joy that is deeply rooted in the assurance of God's steadfast love. So as people of faith, we find our joy in the assurance and promise that God's love of us hold firm and nothing, neither disease nor suffering, neither turmoil or death will separate us from God's love. And once we find this joyful assurance of God's steadfast love, our eyes are open to see God's abundant blessings around us. We see the blessings of a loving family, trusted friends, and a supporting church family. God opens our eyes to see the promise of potential friendships and blessings in strangers and even in those who are different from us. We see the creation as the theater or a beautiful book in which all creatures, great and small, are as letters to make us ponder the invisible things of God, God's eternal power and divinity. We see the abundance of God's creation that provides and is ours to nurture and appreciate. We see in the beauty of creation the majesty of the Creator God who created and shaped everything as a divine artist to sing God's praises. A world abounds with God's free grace. And when this happens, we cannot be anything else than grateful. We are grateful to live in a land that God has shaped and formed to provide and to sustain all of us. This land is fruitful and it yields more than enough for all. We are but caretakers of this earth, for all of the world is God's own field, fruit unto God's praise to yield. So we too can and should give thanks to God, for God is good. Whatever life throws at us, we can hold unto the unmoving and eternal truth that we will never be alone. Life, with all its toil and trouble, is filled with opportunities to discover God's love and trustworthiness. As we are preparing for this year's Thanksgiving, we admit that it will not be the same as other years. We acknowledge a deep sense of loss and sadness. We are sad. We are frustrated. We may even be angry, scared, and unsettled. However, as people of faith, we believe that God is still at work. And the one thing we know of God is this. God brings joy to people in spite of their external circumstances. God makes it possible for people to be grateful in spite of suffering. God, after all, brought new life from a cold tomb. And God brings new life, new opportunities, new excitement, new appreciation for the bountiful gifts that are there for us to discover. And therefore, we are grateful here, but we are also hopeful for the future, for the future is in God's hands too. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of the world and giver of all good, we thank you for the earth, our home, and for the gift of life. We praise you for your love in Jesus Christ who came to heal this broken world, who died rejected on the cross and rose triumphant from the dead. Because he lives, we live to praise you, our God, forever. Gracious God, who called us from death to life, we give ourselves to you, and with the church through all ages, we thank you for saving, for your saving love, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the beginning, there was nothing, and out of nothing, you fashioned a universe so vast, so unimaginable, 
that we can only sigh with amazement when we stare upwards on a starlit night. And within this universe, you positioned the earth and populated it, provided for it and designed it for it to be a place of beauty. Creator God, we thank you. In the beginning, there was just potential, the seed within the packet, soils, nutrients, sunshines, warmth, rain clouds gathering, and within the tiny seed, all that is our daily bread encoded, primed, and ready should it be planted and allowed to grow. Creator God, we thank you. In the beginning, there was humankind placed within your garden, made steward, gardener, and caretaker of this place of beauty, given responsibilities and the capacity to enjoy. And yet among the seeds we have sown have been weeds and crops of our own choosing, which have not shown fruit or have spread and choked the earth. Creator God, forgive us. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you call us by name. You feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives in service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives might bring glory to you. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God Almighty, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.